So welcome back to our radio show on risk, fees, and taxes, and eliminating those, reducing those uh, to improve your retirement. Uh, right now, we're going to be talking about Social Security. Social Security. Is it a topic that you want to talk about? Is it, is it something you know that uh, people don't understand? Well, I mean, you, you've heard of Social Security. You're eligible when you get to be 62 for Social Security if you've worked enough to earn some, some income, right? So when should you take it? That's that's a really hot topic, right? Should I wait as long as possible? I'll get more money. The longer you wait, you get more per month by waiting. You can wait all the way to 70, or you could take it early at 62, and of course you get a little less money, but then you get it now. What's the benefit of, of doing uh, one or the other? In most cases, for the average American, for most people, they hear all the time, wait as long as possible. Wait, And it's right. not that the government is greedy. Like, yes, they are, but it's not because <laughs> of that reason they want you to wait. And uh, the reason is you're going to get an 8% increase every year, right? So it's 8% more every year. The longer you wait, the more money you're going to have for, for Social Security. Now, why is that important to the average American? So the, the average American does not have enough saved in retirement to meet all their income needs. So they're going to need to have as much as possible from Social Security. So the average American probably should wait as long as possible because it is more in the paycheck. And, and you're going to work through age 70, maybe longer, just to be able to put food on the table. So uh, now our, our uh, uh, we, we help anybody. So if you want to go to our, our, our website and, and uh, talk to us, we don't have any minimum that you need to have to be speak with us. But the focus of this radio show is really for clients that have a, a decent amount of money saved so they are paying taxes and they're tired of paying too much taxes. So you are not the average person. If you're, if you're one of our regular uh, listeners, most of our listeners have a decent amount of savings. And so for you, you may want to take it early. There are several benefits to taking Social Security early if you don't really need uh, to, to take it. So, uh, so, the, we, we, so the key question is, if you're thinking about taking it, whether, whether you're wondering whether you should or should not take it, then that fits right in with what you're saying. Then, then you should take it. If you really have to take it, you need the money to survive, then wait as long as possible. Um, and so you had that choice of 62 to 70. What is the key ages to be aware of? You have 66 or 67. For most people right now, 67 is That's your, called your full retirement age. Yes, FRA, full retirement age. That's the age that you don't have any income restrictions on receiving Social Security. So if you're still working and you're not ready to retire yet and you turn 62, you can't really take Social Security unless you're going to make less than $22,000. Uh, $22, so if you have, again, if you're not one of those, uh, uh, the average Americans, you have make above average income, let's say you make $100,000 or $200,000, you really can't take Social Security because they'll uh, disqualify you. you. You make too much money. But once you turn 67, even though it's not the most Social Security you can get by waiting until 70, you can go ahead and take it even if you're still working. There's no income cap on that. You can mm -hmm. make a million dollars a year. doesn't matter. You can still get your Social Security. So- the key is if you're still making a lot of money, then you should probably wait till full retirement age. If you're not making a, a earned income, now you could be making money in rental income, dividend income, interest income, um, things like that. But if your earned income is high, then you really can't take Social Security until your full retirement age. Now, what if um, you know I'm I have my own business, I have a corporation, or and I, I can make a couple hundred thousand dollars? Can I still have? Do I still have to wait till sixty-seven to take my Social Security? Well. Yes and no. I mean, you have to wait till sixty-seven if you're if you're going to report that you earn a certain amount over twenty-two thousand dollars. However, if you have your own company, then you could defer some of that income for a few years if it's a corporation. So you can leave the money in the corporation and just pay yourself a twenty-two thousand dollars salary, and then you could pay the dividends to yourself in a future year. You'll still pay tax on that, but then you you are not going to be limited by Social Security. And you also have a lot of deductions that you could take as a self-employed person that you may not be able to take if you have a W-2 income. So there are some flexible options for taking Social Security early if you are self-employed. Um, so know the rules. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is you should need to talk to somebody that understands the tax code and works within the tax code to give you the best advantages you can legally. And, and if I want to keep working but my wife wants to retire, is, is my income going to affect what she gets? Nope. Because uh, she doesn't have earned income. She, she, she has spousal income, but not earned income. So earned right. income is the key word. If you're earning income, that's what prohibits you from taking Social Security if you make more than 22000 
Okay. So again, go to our website and you can find out what the best age to take Social Security would be for you. We can do that calculation. And again, the website is riskfeestaxes.com. And you can click the green button and schedule a meeting with us on our calendar. It'll be a Zoom call and we can talk to you uh, wherever you are. Uh, and, and we'll be happy to, to so do that. Let's give you an example. Okay. So if you're at a, a going to take Social Security, the, the full retirement age, uh, now let's just say 62. All right, say 62, you're going to take uh, Social Security. What is your Social Security uh, if you're max it out? Would be what? So this year, if you retire with the most possible Social Security, you'll probably get about $2,500 a month at age 62. Okay. So if 62, you can get $2,500 a month. But if you wait, and let's say you wait all the way to 70, how much would you get? Well, if you wait till 70, instead of 2500 a month, you might get $4,500 a month. Wow, that's like $2,000 more per month. Exactly. That's a lot of money. It is. But what do you miss out on? If you wait, then you are missing the Social Security you could be getting for the next eight years. That uh, comes to about $246,000 of losses in, in this example. Well, that's a quarter million dollars. So if you don't take Social Security and just wait till 70, you missed out on $250,000. That's a quarter million dollars. Again, this is if you're maxing out Social Security. The numbers are going to be different for you. When we meet with you, we can provide fiduciary advice about your situation. So this is an example. So what could you do with that $250,000? You could do Roth conversions. You could stick it in a CD right now, earning five percent. You could, mm -hmm. uh, you know, buy a rental property. You could do a lot of different things. So this money is there. Might as well take it because you know what? You're never going to be younger or healthier than you are today, right? And the time value of money, uh, the dollar that is worth more today. In fact, I was just uh, looking at an article today that they're surprised that inflation is higher than they expected again, even though they're working on it. So yeah, that that's. Inflation is, is a big factor. And in 2023, there was a 3.2% increase in Social Security for inflation. Now, those of you listening, how many of you think in 2023, inflation was really only 3.2%? It, it wasn't. There, there's a lot of things that are a lot more expensive now that you have to buy every month. And so the, the important thing to remember is that you do get increases for Social Security, but they're never usually as much as inflation really is. Uh, they they say it is, but you know it, the the value of the money is is really not as high, and so because of that, it can benefit you to take it earlier. Um, and so again, if you do that break even analysis and see how long is it going to be, because you you talked about Raz, you talked about a two hundred forty six thousand dollar loss by uh, you know by waiting eight mm -hmm. years because you're not right. going to get all that. But I'm going to get more. I'm going to get two thousand dollars a month more now. So isn't that better? I mean, uh, it's going to catch up really fast, right? How long does it take to catch up? Well, if you divide that 246 by the $2,000, your break even is about 124 months. That's 10 years. So by the time you break even, you're going to be 80 years old. And that's it without any interest. Now, if you did the simple interest of, say, 6%, that adds another three years to your break even point. So you're now you're 83. And this is pretty much going to be the same for most people, no matter how much your Social Security actually is, the break even point is around 83 or so when you count the opportunity cost. And I was just reading a statistic recently that the average life expectancy for an American that's turning 62 today is 83. So the Social Security Department is not stupid. They want to give about the same amount of money to you no matter when you take it. So if you take it at 62, you take it at 67, you take it at 70, and you live to an average age, then you'll get exactly the same amount of money. But that's still not taking into consideration the taxes. So let's talk about that for a minute. When I first heard that Social Security was going to be taxed, I was so mad because it's a tax coming out of my paycheck now, and you're telling me I'm going to pay tax again when I receive it? Yeah, Daniel, but you know, you don't have to worry about paying tax on Social Security. You know why? You're so young, you probably won't even have Social Security. <laughs> so, I don't know if that makes you feel better, but at least no, you don't not really. taxes. <laughs> so for me, it's just a tax. Um, you know, but but for for those of you who are of the age that you're approaching Social Security and you're you're going to receive that soon, then it is taxed based on how much other income you have. So there is a, a something called provisional income. And provisional income is a special calculation to determine whether your Social Security will be taxed and how much will be taxed. So what they do is they take half your Social Security, whatever it is, and then all your other income, ordinary income, dividends and capital gains, non-taxable interest, anything, any income you have, and they add that together, and that becomes your provisional income. And if your provisional income is, is over say 44,000 for a married couple for a married couple then 85% of your social security gets added to your bottom line and you have to pay tax on whatever bracket you're in and so again there's different thresholds if it's under a certain threshold then it might all be tax free so if all of your income is Roth IRA 
then you know your social security will be tax free but if you're over these thresholds then social security will be taxable up to 85 percent that means 15 percent of your social security is always tax free however the other 85 percent might be taxable so let's run through an example if you take your social security early then first of all, you don't have to t uh, take as much out of your IRAs, mm -hmm. which allows them to keep growing. Right. But also it lowers your taxes because only half your Social Security counts towards this threshold. So Raz, let's say you retire today. So I take Social Security and I tell my wife to wait. And so we need $60,000 income. So I take the other $40,000, take $20,000 of Social Security, and the other $40,000 comes out of my IRA to make up the difference so I can have $60,000 in retirement. So if you do that and, and you have 20,000 of social security and 40,000 from your IRA, then we run through that calculation and on, only about half of your social security is taxable, about 11,000 of it is taxable, okay. which is not too bad. You got some of it tax-free, some of it taxable, but let's use a different example. Let's say I retire too, and both me and my wife take social security at the same time, and that lets our IRAs last longer. So now we're getting 40,000 from social security instead of 20. Mm -hmm. And we're only taking twenty thousand out of the IRA, so we have the same income, sixty thousand both both ways. But I pay a lot less in taxes. In fact, I pay nothing in taxes because my provisional income is now so low that pretty much all my Social Security is tax free. Out of forty thousand dollars, only four thousand dollars is taxable, and so most of my income on the tax return is is tax free, and it's still under the standard deduction, so I wouldn't pay any tax at all. And that's an example of the type of proper tax planning that, that can really help. And it's one of the differences between working with a tax attorney like I am and, and a CPA. So you, are, uh, if you're listening on the radio, you may have a, a great CPA, great accountant, and I've got nothing against CPAs or accountants. Uh, most of them or many of them are very, very good at what they do. But normally they're very reactive, not proactive. So what does that mean, Raz? What is that means they're always reacting to what's happening. So when something happens then they say, okay, write a check. This is what you owe. Stay out of jail. But they're not doing any planning going forward and planning for that stuff. And uh, so you, you, having a tax attorney in, in your back pocket really helps you to plan a little further and uh, allow you to make changes before they they change you. So so you may you may be thinking that, you know, why is this different than what I've heard before? I've always heard you should delay as long as possible with Social Security. You know, I mean, to get 8% more Social Security every year I wait. We're just smarter than everybody else. <laughs> well, you, you, it's based on a lot of different factors, and it's not the same for everybody. And for the average American, it, it may make sense to wait. But if you have above average income or assets, then you probably want to take it as soon as possible for a number of reasons. But go ahead and go to our website. Go to riskfeestaxes.com and schedule a free Zoom call with us so we can give, give you fiduciary advice about your specific numbers. You can show us your Social Security statement, and we'll do a calculation exactly for you and give you the proper and optimal amount of time uh, to take Social Security so that overall we reduce the three biggest killers in retirement. And what are those three biggest killers? Risk, fees, fees and, and taxes. And taxes. Risk, fees, and taxes. So again, our website is riskfeestaxes.com. Go ahead there and schedule and a meeting with us. Just be aware. I mean, you only get to retire once. We've retired hundreds of people. So don't make a mistake. All right. So look forward to seeing you soon.